On our last few programs, we've been talking about the marriage of the Lamb. And in viewing that, we have noted Passover and the Bridegroom, Pentecost and the Bride, and the High Holy Days and the Honeymoon. On today's program, we want to conclude the study by talking about Hanukkah and the baby. For you see, the bride and groom are not complete unless they bear fruit. And that's what we're going to talk about on today's Prophecy in the News because Hanukkah is exactly nine months and ten days after Passover. And uh, that's the gestation period of the birth of a human child, nine months and ten days. Gary Stream is here to discuss with me what I feel is one of the fascinating aspects of the, high, of the Jewish holy days from Passover to Hanukkah, the gestation of a human child. If you count Passover, J.R., as the first of the Jewish festivals, Hanukkah is the eighth. Yes. And eight is a very interesting number in Scripture. Eight is the first number after seven. Uh, Shemini, it's called in Hebrew, it, and its word root is fat or abundant. It's, uh, it's called the number of abundance. And it, is, uh, it speaks of things like the overflowing of oil, the olive oil. And in fact, the symbol of Hanukkah is the oil-filled lampstand. More about that later. Mm -hmm. It has eight lights plus a servant light. And uh, eight, of course, is the number of the name of Jesus. Uh, eight is the number of birth or the number of the new birth. And so there's a great deal to talk about in Hanukkah. And uh, it all centers around the birth process. Now let us begin. Zola Levitt first made this discovery a few years ago when he was writing a book and uh, was consulting with a gynecologist uh, in order to prepare for the writing of this book of his. And uh, he was going to write it on the birth of a baby. And the gynecologist says that on the 14th day of the first month of the nine months of the gestation period, on the 14th day of the first month, the egg appears in the womb of the prospective mother. And of course, immediately he thought about Passover being the 14th day of the first month. Mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. And on the Jewish Passover table is an egg. Now, of course, Christians, and um, I guess we could call it the pagan societies of modern civilization observe Easter and the Easter egg around the same period of time. That is the Babylonian counterpart of God's plan here in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And so we have this egg appearing at Passover. And then she said the egg must be fertilized within 24 hours or the egg will pass on. And that brings us to the festival of unleavened bread, the feast of unleavened bread. And uh, so unleavened bread, I think, represents this seed planted. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if a seed abides al alone, it, it never brings forth fruit, but it's got to be put in the ground and die, and then it bringeth forth much fruit. And so we have in the uh, in the fertilization of the egg in the womb of the mother, this festival of unleavened bread, mm -hmm. this fertilization. And then following that, the gynecologist said that the fertilized egg flows down the fallopian tube to find its place of implantation. That's where it attaches to the wall of the womb and begins to grow. Would take anywhere from two to six days. And this is perfect for the timing of the festival of first fruits, which occurs anywhere from two to six days after Passover. So we have in the three festivals of that one Passover week, the egg fertilized and implanted where it begins to grow into a baby. Fifty days later, corresponding to Pentecost, that embryo takes on the form of a human being. The fingers and toes appear. You can see it, or when you look at it, uh, those who have seen them at 50 days, the gynecologists and so on say, it looks like a baby. Up until then, uh, you can't tell by looking at it whether you're going to have a duck or a tadpole. 
But on the 50th day, it takes on a recognizable form. Following that, as the, as the embryo continues to grow, the baby in the womb of the mother, on the first day of the seventh month, corresponding to the Feast of Trumpets, the hearing is fully developed in that unborn baby. baby. Mm. Ten days later, on what corresponds to Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the blood inside that baby's body changes from that of the mother to that of a self-sustaining human being. It is called the blood acceptable. Well, that's when the high priest takes the blood in the Holy of Holies and sprinkles it upon the mercy seat. It's the blood acceptable. Five days later, corresponding to the Feast of Tabernacles, the lungs in this new baby are fully developed. Up until then, if the baby is born, it cannot survive. The, the lungs are the tabernacle of the breath, just as the Feast of Tabernacles represents the dwelling place of the breath of God, that is the Holy Spirit of God. That's in the seventh month. Once the lungs are developed, the baby can be born and survive. But the baby is not born until the ninth month and ten days after conception. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to Hanukkah and the eight days of Hanukkah. Now, if this, this new baby that is born on Hanukkah is a Jewish boy. Eight days later, he, he enters the covenant uh, with Abraham's God and the covenant of Abraham by uh, a little ceremony they call the Brit Milah or circumcision on the eighth day. Gary, it's absolutely astounding that these holy days of the Jews could picture the conception, development, gestation, and finally the birth of a human child. Because you see, 3,400 years ago, nobody knew this. Mm -hmm. Nobody understood the conception and birth of a child. But God did. Oh, yes. And he wrote it out in the holy days of the Jews. Incredible.